Hey, what's up everybody? It's David here with Tough Guys TV, and on this episode, we are building this amazing new playhouse for our kids to round out the year of 2020. It's been a crazy year for everybody, especially for the kids, so we wanted to give them a new special space to play in outside, and I think we really delivered on it this year. So stay tuned for this video, it's gonna be a good one. Okay, a couple of quick notes about this build before we get started. Number one, we got the plans from Home Depot. I'll have a link below in the description if you wanna pick up that same set of plans. I will note, as you'll see in the video, that there were some inconsistencies and some things in those plans that just weren't correct. And the second note is having the right tools for the job, and in this case, Mazka tools for your pocket hole setup and Diablo for your blades. With the right blades and the right tools at your disposal, you can build anything like this. You don't have to have a professional woodworking shop, just a few straightforward things and you're gonna be good to go. Pay attention as you go, skip through as you need, and let us know in the comments if the video was able to help you out. Links to social media to check us out to see what else we have going on. Thanks so much as always for watching, let's go. So as I mentioned, I'll have a link in the description to this website here. One of the other things I noticed pretty fast is that they show these images here as you're going through it and a few of the images don't actually line up with the step that they're going through so again another reason why i wanted to make this video so i started off by taking the list from the site and creating a nice list the red marks there were things that i wanted to change or modify and it has a nice list of tools that you will need as well as your cut list so that's what we're going to start with right now we're going to start with the deck and then we're going to move through the front panel the, the back panel the side panels and the roof section as well now, as far as the alternatives, the first thing that I actually did an alternate on was the one by six tongue and groove boards. Let me show you what we did. We actually went with this shiplap and they call it like a barn wood look. So it's got kind of a rough finish. Now it's also a one by six. And here is the tag. If that helps anybody trying to find this at a Home Depot, that is actually the product that we bought. And as far as those other alternates, you can see here when they were calling for the two by four by eights, I actually wanted to do treated for underneath the deck area. They don't actually call for that. And then I'm actually gonna do treated deck boards here as well. Now, as I mentioned before on the blades, Diablo, this is the seven and a quarter. You also see their 10 inch blade. This one for us works in our table saw as well as one of our miter saws. And then we also have a 60 tooth 12 inch blade and this would be specifically for the DeWalt miter. For a project like this, especially before you make a ton of cuts like this, that would be the time to go ahead and get some new blades. All right, everybody, as we get going here with the cuts, the first thing I started with was cutting all of the frame pieces for the front side, the side, and the rear side panels. It was important to follow the instructions as I did this. Most of this is two by four cutting, and I also was cutting the two by four base, that's the deck. And here I'm just shaving down the edge of those so that they are right at eight feet so that I can assemble that later on. Now remember, you're cutting the front, the sides, the rear panel, and the roof supports out of all this. And there will be some that are going to require a 5 degree cut on the edges, which we're going to go over here in just a few minutes. Make templates whenever you can as well to speed up your cuts, or stopping block is also helpful. You gotta love the clean, smooth cuts from Diablo as well. Just shows again the reason to have a good quality blade. Now here we are ripping down the one bys to make our one by 2s and one by 3s these weren't something I decided to buy, but you may want to if you don't have a table saw set up in your shop to make these kind of rip cuts. And then here I am moving on to cutting some of the siding pieces. A lot of these can be pre-cut, or if you prefer, you could wait until the frame is assembled and then start making your cuts so that they fit directly onto the structure. One last quick note is that I did use a template cut to make these cuts a lot faster. I highly recommend doing this. And here I show that five degree setup. This is again for the side panels and for the pieces that support the roof itself. And precision is key here as you want everything to match up nicely. All right, so we've wrapped up with all the rest of the cuts. So let me show you guys how I've laid everything out. As I go through this, these plans are just getting kind of worse and worse. They have less and less detail that you kind of need to know because one of the next stages is you have to start doing all the pocket holes and they don't really tell you which ones get it in the instructions. So I'm gonna show you how I laid it out. So we've got this dresser in here because we're actually working on it for another project, but I used it just to lean everything on. And then I actually used some of the kids chalk 
to mark on the floor which stack of boards go to which side. So these are the sides that get a five degree cut, sides that are flat, that's the back, that's the front, and that's the roof pieces. And then I cross reference with the photos which ones need the pocket holes and I made a couple of marks on those just to let myself know when I'm running through these which ones are gonna get those pocket holes. There's really no way to do this easily other than just looking at the photos. Do you guys remember I have the list here that I'm following and making notes on as I go, but I just referenced back here to the photos on my iPad to look at, you know, so those middle sections there have pocket holes shown. I did the same thing with each section. So it just goes to show with these type of plans, you're not gonna have everything you need and you're gonna have to be resourceful, figure some stuff out on your own, especially if the plans are lacking in detail. So the next step is I need to get everything stained, all the parts that need to be stained that is, and those all the one by twos, let me show you those. All right, and for the stain setup, I'm gonna be using this Verithane wood stain. This is their Verithane Classic and the color is Special Walnut. Of course, you could choose whatever color you wanted. Gloves, an important thing I definitely recommend. And I in particular like to use these little pieces of sponge um, they work really well for me and it allows me to get a good spread with the stain. Then I also recommend having some of these blue uh, shop paper towels ready. Now again, I find using a sponge the absolutely best method to do staining with. I've been doing it this way for a long time. Wear gloves, take your time, make sure you're getting a good coat of stain. And if you're doing these as window trim like this is, I like to stain on the inside as well as seal on the inside. Even though that's going to be touching up against the siding, I just prefer for it to be sealed so that it gets, you know, a much better long lasting finish on the wood. Obviously as well, make sure you are staining in a well ventilated area with plenty of room to move around as you need to and make sure you have the proper materials needed to keep everything cleaned up as you go. It's super, super important. And if you'll remember, this was our wood stain, the Verithane in the Special Walnut, and then we used this Helmsman Urethane Clear Gloss. We actually did apply this with two coats. I did not record that process, but we do have two coats of the Clear Gloss on these, and it's looking very well and ready to get these moving. All right, and now we're gonna move over to the pocket holes. This is the Mazka M1. This is their jig, you can get it on their website, mozcaproducts.com. We'll have a link down in the description so you can check out this unit in particular. This one here is their twin hole jig. We'll see that one here in just a few seconds. We have the skill drill driver set up with the Mosca drill, and these are those pieces of lumber that we have marked with the green pen. And basically you just get it started. I'm not gonna go over how to set up one of these jigs in this video. We do have a full review on the channel for this type of jig. You can see the type of pocket holes that you're going to get with it. It is super clean. It is super easy to use. The vacuum attachment is a lifesaver and the clamp holds really strong. I have it built onto my workstation and it's been really tried and true for me for the last year or so. Now we're switching over to the twin hole jig. I've got it set for inch and a half lumber. It basically just slides in place and then you clamp it down super easy to use, and then you're gonna drill out the pocket holes. Now this one doesn't have a back attachment, so I do like to clean up after each one, and it has a magnetic top, so you can just keep it on the clamp as you go. It's awesome. All right, and now we're ready to move on to assembling the frame. These are our Deckmate two and a half inch coated screws that we're gonna be using, exterior graded. And we've got the skill drill driver set up with a drill bit that has a countersink built in so that way I can pre-drill all the holes and bit mag to store all the bits I'm gonna need. And then for the impact driver, I've got it set up with the T25 bit, which works with those deckmate screws. To start off assembling this frame, I did set it up on the floor in the shop. I did not wanna assemble this outside because I didn't want the kids to know what I was working on. Of course, in your case, it may be much easier to go ahead and do this outside. You can see here I'm pre-drilling all of these end cap pieces so they'll be ready to go so I can start drilling everything in. And I'm going to start off by getting all those screws just a little bit set into the wood so that they're going to hold on for me. Then I'm going to screw the end pieces together and then come back and screw the whole frame together on each end and then it's all done and ready to go. All right, with all the pocket holes done, I wanna start trying to assemble this thing and since I'm trying to keep it secret, I need to figure out how to do this in the shop. 
I'm pretty sure the way these instructions read, they want you to do this stuff outside because you need an ample amount of room. Let me show you what I came up with. We've got our Tight Bond 2 exterior wood glue. And for assembly, we're gonna be using the two and a half inch exterior pocket hole screws. These screws are manufactured by Craig. They are exterior pocket hole screws and they work just fine with using the Mazka jig. Now what you've got here is we've laid a piece of plywood down onto that treated frame so that we'd have a flat surface to work on. Again, you could be doing this outside, but we wanted to keep everything hidden from the kids. So this is the way that we went with it. I started off by gluing each of the pieces together after, of course, the pocket holes have already been drilled out. And then I used those large clamps to just hold things together as I went. I'm using that Type Bond 2 exterior wood glue here. And again, exterior two and a half inch pocket hole screws. I took my time as I went through the assembly and again, looking at the photos on the iPad or you could just print those out to review, but the instructions just did not have a lot of clear detail in the pocket holes. So I'm kind of using visual reference and then using my tape measure to make sure I'm lining up everything as best I can before I get these things assembled. And the last few touches here on the front panel, we're gonna get that one stood up and placed out of the way. The next step here is gonna be moving on to the back panel. This was the easiest of them all, just a bottom plate and a top plate, screwing everything together and then making sure I've got the bottom mounting pocket holes in the right spot. All right guys, it's the next day. We've got the sides and the front and the back pieces assembled as far as the frame goes. The next step is I need to get the deck part down and the planks on that so I can start assembling the walls. Now remember one of the key things is we're gonna be assembling the walls so that they are removable. But like I said, the first step is to build the deck. So let's get started with that. We're gonna be using the inch and five eighths deck mate screws. Got the impact driver with the T25. I'm gonna use this old wooden ruler for my spacing. And behind me right there is the planks that are gonna go on top of the deck. I'm gonna show you that here in a sec. All right, getting started on the deck itself, laying the planks in place. This overall is a pretty easy process. I do recommend an impact driver. It's gonna make life a lot easier and a nice fresh T25 bit worked really, really well. Now we use that ruler to create our spacing. Now you could do this different ways with a shim. I happen to have that old wood ruler and it worked out really well for me. Now one quick note here is I should have started my planks from the opposite side that I did because I needed to really start them from the front because I ended up with a small gap as I got to the very end. And in my case, I ended up flipping it the other way once I was totally done so that I had a nice clean edge on the front side. Here again, you can see how well this impact driver does. It's just really awesome. If you're in the market, I definitely recommend this skill lineup. And my sweater's off because Texas, it can't decide if it's cold or hot. That's where we live. So we have these brackets. I'm gonna be putting these on the inside corners of the side panels to the back panel to the front panel. That way I can actually disassemble as opposed to putting screws through the face into each other like the plans call for. These are the brackets that I bought. Now moving along to assembling the wall panels, I definitely have to recommend having a second person. Doing this alone was actually pretty difficult. Now being able to place the pocket hole screws through the base plate actually helped quite a bit. And believe it or not, those brackets made work easier than putting the screws through because I was able to kind of hold them in place pretty easily and then attach those side panels and the whole thing kind of started to hold itself together as I went. So overall though, still recommend if you have somebody to help you with this part of it, definitely the way to go here. I wanted to do a quick overview of where we are. Now, one thing I noticed is these are not as high as the back panel. Now I double checked the measurements of this board on both sides, the exact same gap. And all these cuts are correct per the instructions. This variance here, both sides, it's the exact same. So a little bit concerned about that. I'll figure it out. The next step is gonna be to start putting the siding pieces on so that I can move on to paint and starting to finalize the build. Quick note here heading into the siding install, we did add a one by six piece of stained and sealed trim, as you can see there to the bottom. We just liked it as an accent and I just stacked my shiplap boards right on top of it. You don't have to do this, the plans do not call for it. I just thought it looked really nice. And as you can see, we're using that ruler again for spacing, just like we did with the deck. And as far as the nailer is concerned, we've got this Ryobi cordless 18 gauge Brad nailer. This thing has been great. It's my first Ryobi cordless tool. 
So far, so good. I'm very impressed with it, and we've got a full review here on the channel if you'd like to check that out. It may be coming soon if you're viewing this right away, but stay tuned and check it out. I really do love it. It's awesome. And here's a quick view of the detail that goes above the door. That was by far the most difficult cut to make. And then here at the top, we use the siding panels themselves to fix that gap issue of the back framing members. Here we're installing some of those final trim pieces, super easy. And then I'm adding some of the window trim now to above this little long transom window opening. They actually show for some supports going down the center of it. We just liked it as one big opening. Of course, that's a design change. You can make that decision on your own. Same nails here just to tack all this stuff into place. Now to open this window on the front, the only idea I could think of was to put the actual trim boards on first, then to come back with the jigsaw and cut the opening out because there's no framing supports on the inside. That worked for us. Not sure if that's what they meant for you to do, but it worked out great. And lastly here, we're slicing off the end of the roof sheathing so we can put that in place and start on the roof. All right, everybody, so it's the next day. We are getting the roof installed. I've started off by putting a little bit of tar paper on here. This is number 30, so it's a little bit thicker than it probably should be, but we had it left over from a previous project. We're gonna put this down first, bottom first, then top to over layer it. You should be using some plastic caps, but we're using some regular nails. After we get done with this, we can put the drip edge on and then we can put the shingles on. Now, as I mentioned, I should have been using one inch plastic caps here. I just did not have any and it is a children's playhouse. Here's a quick view of the inch and a half inch drip edge. This is a pre-finished in a black color. And here's a quick detail showing how we cut that corner. Just one straight cut, measure it out and then fold that in and you get a nice clean corner on the outside edge. Now here I am installing this, just marking the other side. We're gonna make a cut and do the same type of fold. Super easy there. And I'm using the nailer actually to attach this to the top. It probably isn't the best way to do it, but it worked out really well for me. Now with the shingles, you wanna start by overlaying them and just follow the manufacturer's instructions depending on the shingles you have. Make sure you're putting your nails in the right spot. These would normally be nailed with six nails in my area. I put three nails or so per piece of shingle. I'm really not concerned with it. Again, it's a children's playhouse here. Now to start cutting the shingles, this is a hook blade. That's what you're gonna to wanna to use. And as I move on to the last couple of rows of strips of shingles, I should mention here, I'm using some rubberized roof sealant to make sure those things adhere down because I really don't have much meat left to be putting nails. So definitely consider using some rubberized sealant in that area. We have this thing taped off and ready to go. The roof is done. As you saw earlier, respirator ready because we're going to use a sprayer for this. So like I said, everything is taped off. Paper down there at the bottom. We're going to be painting this black, the deck part. So if I have a little bit of overspray, I'm not too worried about that. So make sure you spend the time during the, the prep phase for painting. Make your life a lot easier. The inside is going to be full sprayed white as well. And here is the sprayer that we're going to be using. This is by Wagner, the Flexio 590. Comes in a nice kit pretty easy to use. We're going to get that going now. Now, if you are new to using a paint sprayer similar to this model by Wagner, I definitely recommend taking some time to do some test areas. There are different settings, whether or not you're spraying outside or inside, and depending on the type of wood. The settings we used here, this thing worked really, really great, and I highly recommend the Wagner unit. All right, the paint is finished up. We've got all of the blue tape taken off. Super excited that we've got this to this point. The last thing we'll be doing is the deck paint or stain. We're not really sure yet what we're going to do with the deck, so I'm going to kind of leave this here. But let's take a quick look around at how cool this thing is. That wraps up this video build for the Playhouse 2020 Christmas edition. I hope that this video helped you. I hope that you enjoyed the build. If you're trying to build this yourself and you end up trying to build this in particular Playhouse, please let us know down in the comments how it went for you. Like you probably saw in the video, the plans weren't the best, but we just kind of adapt and overcome as you go through it, as with most builds. So anyways, thanks again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please come check us out on social media and see what else we have going on. And I'll see you guys in the next project.
Thank you.